guys, it's Sam, and today I'm going to completely blind react to the Times 100 Best Fantasy Novels list. So this is a video that I saw pop up in my feed from a couple other creators, and I was like, oh that's cool, I'll watch this later, blah blah blah, and then the same day a bunch of people DM'd me and were like, can you please do this? So I haven't watched anybody else's video, so it's not a, like, me taking it, it was like a request, um, but I also want to say, like, I know that people have done it, I know it's not my idea. Uh, but I just haven't watched those videos. So yeah, I, I have no idea because I didn't want to know anything and have a complete blind reaction and I didn't see anyone talking about it on Twitter in like plain terms about who was on there and like what books were on there and everything. So let's open up this list, see how I feel. Obviously I'm not gonna have read all these books on the list. I might have some opinions about books that I haven't read and like have chosen not to read and things like that. But obviously I'm not gonna have a complete knowledge of all the books on this list. I'm assuming that they're going to be culturally relevant. I guess. Uh, so I'll probably know of a lot of them, but yeah, we'll see how many that I've actually read are going to be on this list. So this was with a panel of leading fantasy authors, Time presents the most engaging, inventive, and influential works of fantasy fiction in chronological order. Okay, Arabian Nights. Sure, I'd say that's pretty high up there. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. True the Looking Glass. Okay, we're gonna have two Alice books on here. Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Okay, that's Narnia. Okay, now we're having, like, again, multiple books by C.S. Lewis. I'm like, okay, you could, you only need to include one, right? Like, include the series. Like, you don't need to include multiple on your 100 book lists to the same person. Like, that doesn't really need to happen. Fellowship of the Ring. I'm sure they're going to put all three on here, though, which just makes me a little bit annoyed. Yeah, they totally did. <laughs> they, they put Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and Return of the King. Yes, obviously, but just put Lord of the Rings on there. Like, just put a series, I don't know. Like, I, I guess they're trying to be, like, all 100 books, but, like, that just seems really redundant. Okay, The Once and Future King, that's Arthurian. James and the Giant Peach and The Phantom Tollbooth, those are, like, some classic kids' stories. Cute, cool, okay. A Wrinkle in Time, another classic kids. Again, multiple, I mean, Ursula K. Le Guin probably does, like, deserve a number of spots, but, again, multiple of, like, the same author. I'm like, okay, guys, like, that. you're gonna stack this a little bit too much in certain areas, probably. Huck Everlasting. I mean, like, yes, some of these are like, okay, are these just classics, like, because they've been classics forever? Or are they, like, truly innovative? I don't know. Again, some of the same authors are popping up again and again on here. Howl's Moving Castle, Diana Wynne-Jones. Again, I haven't read it. Oh, Red Wall by Brian Jacques. That's good. That's, I like that. That Redwall was like my first ever introduction to fantasy probably as a kid. I, I probably read other like little fantasy like short stories as a child, but my first like fantasy series I got into was Redwall. So makes me happy. Obviously not going over every single book here. Okay, here we go. There's like The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. I knew that that was going to pop up. I really hope there's not multiple Wheel of Time books on this list because there's a lot of those. Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. I haven't read it, but it's, you know, it's been made into a show. I don't know if I would necessarily say that that's, like, super influential. Like, it's good, but would I call it influential? I don't know. Bible fan fiction? Outlander. Um, best fantasy books of all time? <laughs> like, I, I mean, again, influential, possibly. Like, you know, it has a huge fandom, it has a show. I haven't read it, but it's more historical than, I mean, the fantastical element is for going back in time, but then there's not like a lot of fantasy in there, you know? So I guess what are the, maybe I'll go back and look at what the uh, rules, because now we're getting into books that are more recent that I do know. The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. I would say that that series, the His Dark Material series, is pretty influential. Again, I'm kind of thinking they're going to put all three books on here, which is just a lot of room being taken up by the same people, but uh, I would say The Golden Compass and all the books in that series are pretty influential. They're not favorites of mine, but they'd be up there. Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Isn't Neil Gaiman on the list of these panelists? I feel like on the, on the judging list. I mean, okay. I wouldn't say, I haven't read Neverwhere. I've read a lot of his stuff. Neverwhere is one of them that I haven't read. Um, American God should be on here if it's not though. But then again, Neil Gaiman's gonna be on here multiple times. Okay, Harry Potter. So they put Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban first. So they didn't include the first Harry Potter book. Um, I know that, you know, we have feelings about JKR now. Um, but for you to put the third book on here and not the first is a little weird. <laughs> um, you're gonna put like a whole series from other people on here and then not the third book like is the third book really the most influential is that when it took when the series took off i would say i would much rather i mean i think the prisoner of azkaban is one of the better ones um but i would say sorcerer's stone if you're gonna put any of the harry potter books 
would be more influential than Prisoner of Azkaban, in my opinion. A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. So again, they're putting the second... Okay, this is really weird, because I, I know I was bitching earlier about they had put, like, whole series on there earlier, which was a little weird, but now they're only putting, like, one book, and it's not the first book for later on here. I'm like, okay, why did these earlier series get, like, all the books listed, and some of these aren't? And would I say A Storm of Swords is, like, the big influential one of all the... I mean, again, I haven't read the Game of Thrones books, or the Song of Ice and Fire books, but would that one be the most influential? I don't know. Game of Thrones fans, like, let me know. American Gods. I would say American Gods is pretty influential. Um, of all the books that I've read by him is one of my favorites. And then we have Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I would say, I mean, yeah. Again, I don't love that there's, like, multiple books from each series, like, on here. Um, but if we're gonna do that, fine, whatever. But... Yeah, Half-Blood was probably pretty influential because of, like, the deaths in Half-Blood. But again, like, Azkaban and Half-Blood? I don't know if that's true. Mistborn, the first Mistborn book, The Final Empire. Okay, yes, I would I would agree with that. And The Name of the Wind, I would also agree with that by Patrick Rothfuss. I think that that's, like, of for modern times. Again, I cannot necessarily judge, like, 100 best fantasy books of all time, but, like, for modern books, I feel like these are pretty influential up there. City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. Again, I have not read those books, but I would say The Mortal Instruments is, like, pretty influential in the YA category. 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. She's also on this panel. I wouldn't say 100,000 Kingdoms is super influential, because I think she said before herself that, like, that series is, like, her least, um, like, popular, possibly. I mean, maybe Dreamblood is, but it doesn't do super well. Like, I mean, I'm sure her other books, like Broken Earth, will pop up on here later, but putting 100,000 on here seems a little weird. Who Fears Death by Nadia Corfor, that's definitely up there, very critically acclaimed. And Akata Witch. <sighs> I don't think I put Akata Witch on here. Um, I mean, it's it's good, it's fine, uh, but 100 best of all time, I don't necessarily think that. Again, I think it'd be fine if there was more room on this list, if they hadn't included, like, so many repeats of authors and series, but Akata Witch is like, Akata Witch is good, but I wouldn't say it's super influential. I think it is award-winning. This, this is one that I have read, but I don't really hear it like talked about that much. The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Excellent, excellent choice. Excellent choice. Um, I would say The Night Circus, like, I know I'm really biased, um, but I would say The Night Circus is pretty up there because I think it's pretty polarizing. A lot of people do know about it, and it is, like, its own sort of, like, unique thing. Um, so I'd agree. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, definitely. I think that's high up there for, like, historical, you know, based on myth and having, like, a very prominent male-male romance that is, like, pretty much canon, you know? So I'd say yes. Angel Fall by Suzanne E. I mean, it was pretty popular when it came out, but I wouldn't say it's influential. Like, I don't think people care about it now. The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell, um, that was pretty popular, like, when I first joined Booktube. Um, less so in, like, the fantasy realm, though. I feel like this was more popular in, like, the literary fiction sphere of people. An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. Um, influential? Um, I guess it is pretty popular. I don't necessarily know if that series is going to stand the test of time, though, the way that some other series that so far haven't been included, I think, would. Okay, the fifth season is on here. Fantastic, wonderful, great, love to see it. Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. Um, I think some people do like this. This was a Nebula winner. Um, I could not finish it, and I think it might either be in boxes somewhere or I got rid of it. So would I say this is, like, the most influential? Like, are these the greatest of all time? Like, I don't know. Shadow Shaper by Daniel Jose Older. Um, that was another one, like, almost similar to Akata Witch for me, where it's like, it's good, but is it, like, the best of all time? No. I don't know, I just feel, I feel like there's pieces missing, and I couldn't tell you what books I think should replace these, but I wouldn't say these. Six of Crows by Libra Dugo, yeah, and The Why I Roam, pretty influential. The Wrath and the Dawn by Rene Adier. Um, greatest of all time, like, I really like The Wrath and the Dawn. It is one of my favorites, I still have it on my shelf. I really like it. Would I say it's, like, a great, the, one of the greatest fantasy novels of all time? I mean, like, when you put, when you put it on the Times list of greatest fantasy novels of all time, I mean, that's just, like, a, a really high pedestal, and I don't necessarily think it belongs there. And I don't know, I'm gonna have to go back. They did say, like, how we picked this, so I'm gonna have to go back and kind of see what they were doing to kind of decide with some of these. Okay, the second book, A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir. No. No. Maybe you could say book one of Saba Tahir's, but like definitely not. Like we're not having multiple books from there, which is the same amount of Harry Potter books that you put on the list. 
Like, absolutely not. I mean, if, again, say all you want about Harry Potter, but we know that that's one of the most influential books of all time. You know, series of all time. We're not gonna put this, you know, A Torch Against the Night in the same category. Please. No, absolutely not. This is the one that's offended me the most so far. All of Storms by Ken Liu. Again, we're having repeats. Ugh, like, I'm annoyed because I know I said, you know, if you're gonna have repeats, then, like, some of these series, okay, sure, but, like, some of these having repeat books from the same series, I'm like, no, that, we don't need to do that. The Changeling by Victor Lavelle, I did hear a lot about that, so I think that's, that's probably true. We're getting close to things that have come up pretty recently. The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin, I'd say, I'd say yes. Arushaw on the End of Time by Rashi Chakshi. Again, I've read it, it's middle grade. Why is that on the list and not, uh, Percy Jackson? Um, like... I mean, I haven't read Percy Jackson, I don't care, but like, why is Arusha on the list and not Percy Jackson? Percy Jackson is more influential. Like, it's great that like, a series written by a woman of color featuring like, kids of color is in here. A, a unique mythology. I, I'm not arguing any of that, I'm not arguing that it's not great, but like, as far as influential best fantasy novels of all time, this is on there and not Percy Jackson. I don't get it. Blanca and Roja by Anna Marie McLemore. Um, I don't think that's one of their most popular books. I would say maybe Wild Beauty would be higher, but I can't, I don't think that that's that, like, influ- Best of all time? I don't know. Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. Oh, no, 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 come on, come on. I mean, I guess if you're gonna count, like, the hype around it, maybe, but, like, no one even cared about that second book. If that second book's on here, I'm gonna throw a fit. Circusy by Madeline Miller. Love it, but I don't know if Cersei is like as high up there as like Song of Achilles. Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. I love that book. I think it is great. And again, are we going on influence? Like, I don't, I mean, I think it is one of the best fantasy books of all time. And I also think Cersei is one of the best fantasy books of all time. So as far as like my opinion, yes. But as, I don't, I don't know, this whole, like, I'm getting really caught up in this whole, like, it's the time, 100 best fantasy books of all time. Like, really? Like, these books came up pretty recently. How can we decide that these are, like, best of all time? Are they gonna stand the test of time? Blah, blah, blah. You know? That's kind of throwing me off. The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I think that is, that is really good. I would say, I would say yes. Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. Um, I really do like that book. Best of all time. Like, you're gonna include this, but not some other really iconic urban fantasy stories. Like, I do love this because, again, it's native folklore, the DNA people, but, like, if we're gonna include, like, really influential paranormal, like, fantasy series, I would say, like, the Sookie Stackhouse books, um, like, Vampire Diaries, Vampire Academy, like, some of these kind of books. Um, there's other, like, obviously the Laurel K. Hamilton books are really influential to me, but not to everybody necessarily. The Mercy Thompsons, the, um, Alana Andrews. Some of these are much more beloved and like influential in the genre than I'd say the Trail of Lightning is. Like Trail of Lightning was inspired by a lot of those and then making it less white, which is great. Like I would, I would say include both. Like if we had more space because of these other series not having multiple books in the series on there, we could have included like more of some of the more like new things that are like twisting the tropes and then the things that the tropes came from. That would make more sense to me second book in the Tomi Adeyemi series, Children of Virtue and Vengeance. No, no one cared about that book. No one cared about that book. No one cared about that book. Okay, The Dragon Republic, we're gonna include, you know, second books. Again, I, I, like, that's a series that I like. I haven't read that book yet, but like, why are we doing this? Guides of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. I would say that's pretty high, but like, it's fairly new. Um, best of all time? It's up there. It's pretty up there, but like, man. Queen of the Conquered by Case and Calendar. I do appreciate that book a lot, and I like what that did. It's so hard for me to be like, are these the greatest of all time? I don't... Eliza Locke Lamora isn't on here. The Bear and the Nightingale isn't on here. I mean, I do like Queen of the Conquered. Like, I'm not saying against Queen of the Conquered. But, like, I would say Queen of the Conquered and some of the other ones. Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. I haven't read that. I've heard, like, decent things. We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. Um, not bad. I mean, these are all, like, all the books on this list are good fantasy books. Like, none of these have been, like, besides a couple of them. I haven't been like, oh, god, no, those are awful. But, like, best of all time. I'm getting so hooked on that. Like, best of all time? I don't know. It's, it's fine. That was, like, a four star for me. Best of all time? All time? All the fantasy books ever written? I don't know. Here's some newer ones. Elatso by Darcy Little Badger. Um, I've heard good things, but that's, like, brand new. And then Woven in Moonlight, which I think isn't even out or just came out? Okay. Oh. 
okay weird so yeah like I I um uh, like it's just I don't I mean it's not my list right but like I feel like there were some things missing I feel like they should have condensed some of the series that they put on there some of the early stuff too was like uh, I don't know um I'm shocked by some of the choices like I'm sh really surprised Malazan wasn't on there um which I don't love Malazan but like it is one of the most popular and influential fantasy series like ever written um there was only one wheel of time book which I'm fine with but I'm also like okay you're gonna put one wheel of time book but then put like multiple books from other series on there like the children blood and bone what like what or like Saba to here that's weird why don't we have the Catherine Arden books that is like a true crime. I'm surprised there wasn't more Brandon Sanderson. I'm okay with there not being more Brandon Sanderson, but I'm surprised that he wasn't on there more often. Um, Lies of Lacamora. Yes. Um, I would even say like the Shauna McGuire Wayward Children. I mean, I guess those are like novellas, so maybe that's not why. Oh, oh, um, um, she's turned around, so I can't see her. Where is she? Um, yeah, Robin Hobb. Robin Hobb. Robin Hobb. You're not... I mean, I've only read the first series in her giant series, but you're not going to include Robin Hobb. Like, I, what I do like is they did seem to include a lot of authors of color on there, which is fantastic. And that can be true, and there still should have been other books on there in addition to those authors. Because, like, a lot of those books are really good, I really like, but, like, you're not going to include Robin Hobb in a best fantasy books of all time list. I wouldn't necessarily include, like, Nevernight and some of that. I don't know, I might put, like, some Naomi Novik on there, you know? Like, maybe, like, a Brooded or something. Um, who else is over here? Ooh, I might, um, do... Where are I? These are all turned around so that people can't see them when I'm working. Um, like, the Queen of the Tearling, I might, I would have maybe put on there. Again, these are my lists, but, like, I still feel like they're pretty influential. Like, they put the name of the wind. I would say, I, mean, I don't want to include all these, like, white men. Oh! Oh! This is, no, this is, this should have been on here. The Magicians! The, at least one of the Magicians books should have been on there. For sure. For sure. Oh my god. Like, I am... What? I would have thought that would have been on there for sure. I mean, as far as, like, some of the YA, um, instead of, like, the Saba Tahir books or, like, the Tomei Adiyami, maybe, like, the first ones in the series, whatever, but stop including the second ones, I would have put, like, um, like, Sabriel by Garth Nix on there. Um, I would have maybe included, like, I don't know, like, maybe some Claire Legrand or some, like, Susan Dennard for, like, Good. I mean, I'm kind of surprised there was no V.E. Schwab. I'm okay, because, you know, she's not my favorite, but, like, I'm surprised. Yeah, that was, that was weird. Okay, I'm gonna go up to the top, and they're gonna let me know how they decided on this. Yeah, with a panel of le- see, this is what- this is what makes me kind of like, what? With the panel of leading fantasy authors, N.K. Jemisin, Neil Gaiman, Saba Tahir, Tomei Adeyemi, Diana Gabaldon, George R. R. Martin, Cassandra Clare, and Marlon James, they all picked, and all of their books were on there. Some of them multiple times. A little like, hmm. They recruited all these panels of leading authors, ones I just mentioned, and they joined the Time staff in nominating the top books of the genre. Panelists did not nominate their own works. Okay. The group then rated the 250 nominees on a scale, and using their responses, Time created a ranking. Time editors considered each finalist based on key factors including originality, ambition, artistry, critical and popular reception, and influence on the fantasy genre and literature more broadly. So some of these books that were more recent, I'm like, can you really talk about like critical and popular? I mean, you can kind of do like critical and popular reception, but like influence on the genre. Some of these are not influential on the genre. And maybe they didn't rank that up, but like, because we don't know where they all ranked, like what were the top, they just went in chronological order. So some of these could have been more at the bottom because they weren't so influential. And some of them, like some of the ones that I mentioned that I felt like weren't super influential were really like original, but I wouldn't necessarily say ambitious for a lot of those. And that's that. That's pretty much all they say. So I don't. I don't like completely hate it. I'm leaning a lot in this video. I don't know. I'm, I'm like exhausted by this. I mean, yeah, some of my faves weren't on there, but that's fine. That's not really why I'm like annoyed. I just don't. I don't feel like that when like when I think of like the best fantasy books of all time. Like I don't feel like that list is accurate. You know, even if like I was expecting way more books to be on there that I didn't even recognize. There wasn't a ton of that. There was some more stuff like that was like earlier that I didn't necessarily recognize. Like I know that they, they were like, oh the panelists didn't nominate themselves, but then like why are multiple of their, like is because they were in the room and everyone was like, oh we gotta nominate Neil, you know, like I don't know. I feel like other Neil Gaiman books were even like, again, more so than Neverwhere. Stardust or something would have been more influential. I don't know. 
yeah, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Um, the most, I mean, I keep just like repeating myself, like there's some like glaring inconsistencies. Um, I don't really feel like that's not a list that I'd be like, oh, I want to read all of these because they're the most influential. I'm like, I don't think that they are. Um, I don't feel like that's a list that I would necessarily be like put that as a challenge to myself to read to like really get the full breadth of like the history of fantasy. And that's what they kind of implied in some of the like description of how they created the list. And I don't think that's accurate. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. I hope you guys found this interesting. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.